When we talk about creation myths, I explain that we don't know who is in the right and there are many other versions out there. Today we shall tell one such story. Recently Volo tried to summarize the story, but my dwarven scholar friend here says that Volo is skimping on the details. We have most of these legends from the dwarves. They are good record keepers, but even they agree that the race was not here when this all occurred. We also have some information from the giants, a few wall murals and ruined palaces, as well as their word. But when it comes to the word, it's hard to get the same retelling twice. So keep all this in mind when you hear this story, and without further ado, the history of giants. The giant dynasty starts long before the dwarves carved our history into the stone. Before the creator races even set foot in the realms, the giants were striding across Toril's dusty steps. The giants say that their race descends from the Anam, the Allfather, he who is known as the progenitor of worlds, the prime, and the great creator. The Allfather is the all-knowing deity of knowledge and understanding, as well as a lustful and brash god of fertility and growth. He is omniscient, but in his wisdom chooses not to know certain things. The legend says that Anum created not just the heavens and the earth, but the light, time, and the elements themselves. After creating the universe, Anum reveled in it. He fathered the gods Stronmaus, Grolantor, Yalanes, and Scoreus Stonebones with a wind goddess that he met during his travels. The gods, Surtur, lord of the fire giants, the dead goddess Shax, Dian Castra, the trickster goddess, as well as Hyatea, Thrym, and Karantor are also children of Anum, but from different goddesses and elementals that Anum encountered while exploring his creation. The mighty Memnor is sometimes said to be his son, and other times said to be his brother, or sometimes he is the spawn of a world-devouring monster. <laughs> Our forefathers tell us that Anum was one of the very first gods that took an interest in Toril before the Dawn War and the breaking of the world. He was attracted to Toril by the goddess that was a mountain, her name among the giants, Othea, but known as Deronian to us dwarves. Othea bore Anum several sons, each of whom he loved more than any of his previous progeny. Anum took such pride in his children that he went on to create the mighty kingdom Ostaria in their honor. Ostaria was a mighty empire that stretched across Faerun from the cold lands to the Vilhon Reach. As Ostaria grew, Anum divided his kingdom into several regions, each to his favorite son. Vilmos claimed dominion of the sea and lakes. Nikaius was given the skies. Rook claimed the kingdom of the rolling hills. Otar was granted the gold waste. Mosud received the fiery peaks to the south. Obadai claimed the cold caverns of the Underdark. Lanaxis claimed the cold, vast plains and was accepted as the natural leader due to his size and strength. It was at the time of the founding of Ostaria that the dragons fell from the sky and started their infestation of Toril. The legends tell us that they fell from Selune and that her tears are dragon eggs waiting to fall and create a new age of dragons. Anam and his children did not pay them much heed and only after they had matured did they see their folly. A great war erupted between the dragons and the giants. To this day, bards will sing about the epic battles that ensued in this great conflict. 
After what is said to be a thousand year war, a truce was struck between the dragons and the giants. According to the dwarves, the dragons wanted peace to prepare for a great civil war among dragons. According to the giants, Anum and the Lord of the Dragons played a game of Wari to settle the endless war, and the game ended in a stalemate, and so did the war. Whatever the reason, by the time the war ended, Ostaria had shrunk to a shadow of its former self. Most cities were destroyed, and what once was an empire of giants were now merely tribes. On the day the truce was declared, the nation of giants occupied only the northernmost edge of Faerun, areas that we know today as the Savage North and the Cold Lands. So, as you can see, Volo was a bit short in his book about the history of giants, but we are only halfway there. More on this topic next time. <laughs>